we know what is ground water today we are focusing on water wells which is the way by which we take ground water to the surface of earth we have all seen wells it may be open wells or tube wells or commonly we call it as bore wells so getting into the subject a water well is a hole or shaft usually vertical excavated in the ground for bringing ground water to the surface it is divided into two classes open wells or dug wells and tube wells or commonly known as bore wells if you are living in a rural area open wells will be common the usually we call wells as open wells they are big holes or shafts with considerable diameter maybe 1 to 3 meters of diameter even and it will be dug into a certain extent of depth as you know open wells are very common in rural areas whereas tube wells are more common in urban areas where there is a constraint of space for dugging out some portion of land will be difficult in urban area so you will be inserting a narrower diameter hole in kind of a tube or a pipe into the formations to get ground water bore well is a common name to understand that tube well it is just a pipe extending into the permeable area underground so open well an open well is comparatively of bigger diameter and is suitable for discharge up to 0.005 cmx so compared to the size of about 3 meter or 2 meter diameter size of a well open well the discharge is comparatively less it is because the cross sectional area of flow is less in the open well and the water can be withdrawn safely only at the critical velocity of soil so the thing is when you pump out a portion of water from an aquifer to the surface there is a parameter called critical velocity critical velocity is the maximum velocity of water that can be pumped without disturbing the soil particles near it to state simply if suppose we are pumping water from a well and velocity of water right now is less than critical velocity so only water will be coming in no soil particles will be disturbed or dislodged suppose we are increasing that velocity for the sake of increase discharge we need more water so we need to increase the velocity of water and if this velocity of water exceeds critical velocity with the water coming in there will be soil also so after some time the well may implode the walls of the well may get in destroyed by itself okay so that is critical velocity so in case of open wells we cannot increase the velocity of water beyond a certain point because soil particles may come with water and the well may implode this is a typical open well as we all know next one tube well it is a long pipe sunk into the ground with a strainer which allows water to pass through but prevents sand from coming in so the concept of tube well is very simple so to escape from this constraint of critical velocity we will just insert a pipe into the soil or aquifer and pump out water and this velocity will be well above critical velocity so obviously there will be disturbances in soil particles so to avoid that there will be meshes or what we call it as strainers will be attached on this pipe to stop the soil particles entering this pipe so whatever be the velocity of water there will be no soil particles in the pumped out water okay so because of the strainer high velocity of flow can be permitted without danger of soil particles being carried away with water so usually we install these kinds of instruments or apparatus for pumping out water it can be attached with motor it can be attached with any other pumping device that would assist reaching water into the surface types of tube wells strainer well cavity well and slotted well first one strainer type tube well it is the most common and widely used type in common practice when we say tube well or bore well we understand it is as a strainer type tube well 
as the name indicates a strainer or a mesh is wrapped around the main tube of the well this main tube will be inserted into the ground this is strainer type tube well and the central one is the main pipe and the one wrapped around in confined aquifers are called as strainers or wire meshes third point the main pipe contains bigger holes or slots that are the openings of strainer due to fineness of openings of strainer a higher operational velocity of water can be permitted as we said earlier the mesh or strainer will be designed such that no soil particles will be dislodged by the velocity of water pumped out and usually it is kept as d60 to d70 of surrounding soil that is the lesser dim dimension than 60 percentage to 70 percentage of surrounding soil okay so using strainer type tube well you can get water or pump out water from a single confined aquifer or a number of confined aquifers as you can see in this image so if you have the information of depth of confined aquifers you can optimize the strainer to aquifers only because in this between layer impervious layers are either hard clay or rock strata from that layer we won't be getting any water so we don't want to waste any strainer on that layers so in this image this strainer type tube well is taking out water from two confined aquifers and it is plugged at the bottom a strainer well may draw water either from an unconfined aquifer of unlimited extent or from one or more confined aquifers okay the pipe in the aquifer portion is kept perforated only in the aquifer portion in the rest of the portion a blind pipe is provided at the bottom a short pipe is provided to permit settlement of any sand if passed through the strainer that part is not specified in the previous image and the last point the well is generally plugged at the bottom okay second one cavity type tube well this is a special tube well in which water is not drawn through the strainer but it is drawn through the bottom of well where a cavity is formed cavity means a gap is formed so to install a cavity type tube well you need to have two conditions the confined aquifer should have good specific yield there sh should be adequate specific yield from the confined aquifer and second one the aquifer should have a strong impervious material above it for example a rock strata or a highly thick layer of clay etc okay this is cavity tube well as you can see there is a top soil and below that there is there is a pervious strata or unconfined aquifer and below that there is a clay layer that is the impervious strata and below that clay layer we have our confined aquifer and we will be drawing water from that confined aquifer so as we pump out water some portion of soil will be also pumped out and hence there will be a cavity formed after that there will be an equilibrium situation and then you can get clean water pumped out from the well so there is a sequence for its proper working in the initial stage of pumping with the help of centrifugal pump or an airlift pump fine sand comes with the water so there will be muddy water and consequently a hollow or cavity is formed obviously it is because we are pumping out water above critical velocity hence many soil particles will be dislodged from this position and will be flowing with the water okay and as the spherical surface area of this cavity increases outwards it will be look like a bottom part of a football okay the radial critical velocity decreases as this area increases the velocity of water will be decreasing it decreases and decreases and at a certain point of time it decreases below critical velocity at this stage an equilibrium in the cavity formation is established and then on clean water continues to enter the well after this formation of cavity and equilibrium the velocity of entry of water at the bottom of the pipe is lesser than the critical velocity okay so now the entry of water through that cavity is very safe and you can pump out water with required velocity 
main difference between strainer tubule and cavity tubule is in cavity tubule the flow is spherical as we discussed that cavity is in a shape of a bottom part of a football so flow will be in a spherical format but in case of strainer tubule by provision of a strainer the flow is radial like a cylindrical flow okay third type slotted type tubule it is resorted only when you have two types of circumstances first one if sufficient depth of water bearing stratum is not available even up to a depth of 75 to 100 meters so that strainer type tubule cannot be used that is if you are excavating with a strainer type tubule in mind and even after excavating up to 100 meter depth we are not finding any confined aquifer then you need to consult cavity type tubule and second condition is if suitable strong roof is not available so that a cavity well cannot be found if your second option is cavity type tubule and there is no suitable strong roof for that cavity which was the primary condition to choose cavity type tubule so these two conditions arise then we use slotted type tubule this is slotted type tubule you have a main pipe and inside that you can insert a compressed air pipe and there will be slots in that main pipe and slot size will be 25 mm by 3 mm at 10 to 12 mm spacing and at the bottom part of that slots or main pipe you will be dumping gravel or budgery as shrouding part shrouding is done mainly to exclude finer soil particles from getting into the water and as you can see in the image you will be having a casing pipe outside of main pipe and that will be removed after the installing of tube well slotted type tube well have a particular procedure for construction first of all a casing pipe of 36 cm diameter is lowered and soil is excavated out that casing pipe will be penetrating the water bearing strata by about 5 meter depth as you can see in the image the outer one is the casing pipe so that pipe will be inserted to about 5 meter depth to aquifer second step the perforated pipe or main pipe of 15 cm diameter is then lowered inside the casing pipe the slotted portion being only 5 meter long and the rest of the length being of plain pipe so bottom part will be consisting of the slots as you can see in the image and that will be lowered inside this casing pipe so you have a casing pipe and a main pipe inside it 5 meter depth next step is gravel is poured from the top up to 3 to 4 meter higher than the top level of perforated portion of pipe so gravel is poured in between the spaces between main pipe and casing pipe inside the casing pipe outside this main pipe okay as you can see in the image then the casing pipe is withdrawn 5 cm at a time so that that by that withdrawal no imploding or no soil particles are dislodged then the well is developed with the help of compressed air pumped into education pipe or main pipe it's just that you will blow compressed air through that main pipe inside so that many finer particles in that shrouded area will be getting outside that area so that no finer soil will be getting into the water which is pumped out so after developing the gravel area finally when the casing pipe is fully withdrawn the enlarged space between casing pipe and the education pipe or main pipe is suitably plugged so that no impurities are entering into that space by developing the well with the help of compressed air the sand surrounding the gravel filter is freed of final particles and the chances of getting the filter choked are reduced and also you will reduce the chance of getting muddy water the purpose of shrouding with gravel is to get a larger area of radial flow for our yield so that was slotted tube well. 
there are two essential differences between a strainer tubule and a slotted tubule. Always we compare with strainer because it is the most commonly used type of tubule. First difference, in strainer tubule, strainer is the part which helps to prevent the fine particles entering the water. Whereas in slotted tubule, gravel shrouding serves this purpose. It prevents final particles to enter water. Second one, strainer tubule may have several alternative lengths of strainer pipes and plain pipes, while a slotted tubule has the slotted pipe length only at its bottom. Strainer tube, by using strainer tubules, you can take water from any number of confined aquifer. But in case of slotted tubule, you can take water only from single aquifer. So, so far we have been discussing about tube wells. Now we are getting into open well. It is a small portion. As we know, open well is a bigger diameter than tube well. Open well is limited to 30 meters below ground surface. As you know, in case of tube wells, you can reach up to 100 meter depth with the help of strainers. Okay. So open wells can only reach 30 meters below ground surface. So it is classified as shallow well and deep well. As the name indicates, shallow wells and deep wells are not exactly classified based on the depth of penetration. It is just that shallow well will be taking out water from an unconfined aquifer and deep well whereas will be taking out water from confined aquifer. So obviously most common type of open wells we see nowadays is shallow wells. In case of deep well, we need to penetrate this impermeable strata so that you will get access to confined aquifer. Okay. A deep well is well which is supported on an impervious layer and draws water through a hole bored in it from the pervious formation below that layer. Whereas a shallow well penetrates the pervious stratum only and draws its water through it. And based on lining, you can classify open wells as unlined well or kacha well, well with impervious lining or pika well, and well with pervious lining. Lining is the coating that is given for well. For example, in case of unlined wells or kacha wells, water will be drawn all along the length. Because there is no lining, you can draw water from any number of confined aquifer or unconfined aquifer. But in case of well with impervious lining or pika well, you will be drawing water only from the bottom part. Okay. So that was about water wells. Main classification was tube well and open wells. Okay. I hope you understood. Thank you.